talking about theme two. Some of you might not recognize Patrick because you shaved off your beard. That's very funny. Team 2 is kind of uh, a very big team with a lot of projects, so I'll try to um, at least um, present one uh, project per researcher. Um, sorry if I didn't explain too much on your particular research, but even mine, I suffered from, from, from that. So, um, there is six projects, Inventory of Deficiencies and Development of Rapid Screening and Line, Masonry Buildings, Reinforced Concrete Buildings, Steel, Performance and Operational and Functional Components, which I will call OFCs from now on to now, and then Bridge Substructures. Uh, the first one, 2.1, is the Inventory of Deficiencies and Development of Rapid Screening and Deadlines. Um, large number of researchers that you can see from the, from this screen here. Um, one of the main um, achievements actually is a, a series of papers that will be published in the Canadian Journal of uh, Civil Engineering. And that is regarding three earthquakes in the last two years, the Haiti, Chile, and New Zealand uh, earthquakes. And a large number of uh, the researchers in actually uh, participated in um, field um, uh, inspection and writing the papers. Um, for example, uh, as you can see here, one failure of um, uh, school on the left of the screen in the Haiti earthquake and damage to um, the first story of the 12-story uh, building um, in Haiti also. Um, damage to um, masonry, uh, unconfined masonry on the left, and damage to the steel structures, um, structural damage, as well as fire after the earthquake. Uh, damage to a shield wall, uh, illustrated in this particular one on papers on uh, damage to uh, concrete uh, structures in Chile. <coughs> Damage to uh, steel structures here, uh, local blocking of concentrator towers and diagonal tension field failure of a steel beam. This is on uh, industrial structures, uh, damage to industrial structures in the Chile earthquake. Um, damage to uh, reinforced concrete structures in uh, the Christchurch earthquake. Ken Elwood has done, uh, has published it well accepted. Paper was accepted in the Canadian Journal, as I mentioned. There is two photos illustrating damage to uh, buildings in uh, Christchurch. The interesting thing is that um, there is a lot of similarities between the different um, codes between New Zealand and Canada. And so there is much to be learned from um, the damages and also the studies that uh, Ken is uh, doing on um, predicting uh, damage from analytical. Example of damage to um, bridges, loss of support on the left, and failure of shear keys on the right. It's a paper on um, behavior of bridges during the Chile earthquake by a number of researchers and also um, uh, members of uh, industrial members of the network. Um, rapid screening of schools in Montreal. That's just uh, said by Michael and Miguel. Over 100 school building by ancestry using seismic screening. Um, as you can see at the bottom right, uh, about 26% of all the schools actually will have very high priority or high priority of, um, for retrofit actually, and they were built in <coughs> 1960 to 1969 prior to uh, modern uh, seismic design code. Seismic risk by um, a site review of the Ottawa region. Seismic risk assessment models have been developed for reinforced concrete and masonry buildings. Seismic risk assessment uh, model um, have been incorporated in RGIS and Google Maps, actually. You 
you see some illustration. This is what actually Gail uh, presented uh, a moment ago. A casualty estimation model is being developed uh, for Ottawa region. And a comprehensive building inventory study has been conducted in Ottawa. You see on the left a map of building that has been accessed in uh, Ottawa and a breakdown of uh, material used for construction of residential buildings and non-residential buildings. Overwhelmingly, wood frame is uh, the, the main um, structural um, system used for residential buildings. Masonry and wood frame would probably be more than three quarter of non-residential buildings. Um, such a view at, uh, in Ottawa also uh, updated the manual uh, for the Canadian seismic as a, um, no, sorry, has developed uh, actually a program to um, assess the risk of buildings and you see the discussion on the right where you enter the building type, uh, year of construction, uh, building irregularity, <coughs> and so on, and you have at the end um, an estimation of the uh, risk of that, uh, of that building. And also the manual has been updated and I believe it will be available the next year for a uh, price. Um, then we move on to uh, project 2.2, which is um, masonry buildings. So we have done some background study first on survey of masonry <coughs> buildings in Quebec, Central and Eastern Townships and review of internal, uh, international efforts, particularly in New Zealand, Canada, and the US. Testing also has been done, river cyclic testing, in plane and out of plane in, uh, UBC, at UBC and uh, Sherbrooke. And also modeling of um, masonry uh, walls have been, uh, have been done to evaluate the dynamic uh, behavior of masonry and structures. Um, and with myself, Prue, Sachubu, and Ventura are part of that um, project. And I will illustrate a few of the uh, projects being actually conducted. School buildings, inventory and fragility, identification of typical, typical deficiencies in schooling. Two school boards, actually. I said 200,000, it's why we put it to 400,000. But 150 schools were investigated. Ambient vibration measurements were um, done on the uh, on part of the schools, not all of them, obviously. Cyclic learning test on unreinforced uh, masonry uh, clay block were performed, and I understand this is quite important because there's a large number of buildings with that type of masonry, and it costs quite um, millions of dollars to actually rehabilitate or even, in what I understand, the SDRD actually is destroying them and rebuilding them. So there is a lot of money to be saved if we can uh, prove that these can be rehabilitated at a lower cost than replacing them. Out of plane check table tests have been conducted at the University of British Columbia and also will be conducted at the uh, University of Sherbrooke. This is one example of those uh, um, clay blocks that uh, are quite used in those 1960s schools in Quebec as well as in British Columbia. And um, it, uh, from my understanding, it is quite an important study that needs to be um, continued. Um, dynamic test has been uh, done on a number of the schools. You see here the frequencies on the left and period that are obtained on the right and dumping values that are being also uh, obtained. Uh, test, cyclic tests have been performed on those walls. It was difficult to obtain those uh, <coughs> times. There were others on the states. And we had to <coughs> develop special motors to reproduce <coughs> the um, way they were um, uh, assembled during that period of time. On the right, you see how it is tested for shear to uh, characterize the, uh, the, the material. And you see here, response of the cyclic test that has been performed at Trevor, uh, where you see there is significant um, 
uh, strength to be obtained from, from, from those uh, blocks. Obviously, they are kind of fragile, and once they start breaking, they almost explode, but there is certainly a way to rehabilitate the structures at a, at a decent cost. Uh, the out of bed test on shaking table is planned for um, next year. Um, out of plane uh, test has been carried out at the University of um, British Columbia. This is one test performed by Elwood at uh, UBC, where flexible uh, data is modeled by using uh, spring, springs at the top of the, uh, of the wall, as you can see on the right. Survey of masonry buildings in Ottawa. A comprehensive study was uh, conducted. 12,000 buildings were assessed. Masonry building was assessed for a seismic vulnerability by identification of the year of construction and irregularities. And the fuzzy base approach is being implemented to develop a model that identifies the seismic vulnerability of masonry buildings in Ottawa. You can see here um, on the left of the graph. Uh, breakdown again, wood frame is the largest uh, component as you can see. And for your construction, 90% will probably be between uh, 1940 and 1950. In terms of irregularities, uh, by uh, all account, the reentrant corners is the largest uh, of the irregularities that you will see on the building. Um, moving to uh, project 2.3, reinforced concrete buildings, a large number of researchers again from the west to the east. Um, Edward is actually, um, uh, before that, uh, a number of uh, papers have been also submitted and most of them accepted already on damage to concrete buildings uh, in the Haiti earthquake, uh, Chile earthquake, and uh, New Zealand. Uh, Elwood is also conducting um, uh, analytical studies uh, to reproduce damage to buildings uh, in uh, the New Zealand earthquake again in um, an effort to, um, uh, I say, uh, learn uh, the most from those damages and uh, bring some, uh, some um, change to the uh, Canadian coast. Um, here, what we show is collapse uh, mechanism and also comparison between shaking table test and collision. As you can see, the predictions are quite good, so there is um, certainly good uh, hope that uh, the result of these analytical studies will be uh, used in uh, intelligent codes. He is also studied the influence of gravity system on the side displacements of concrete buildings. This is an important area. In uh, in Canada, and uh, much needs to be done actually in the Canadian um, standard uh, steel or concrete actually. Test on all the concrete frames uh, by Satyugra and Palermo in Ottawa. You can see here a frame that is being tested on the site of loading, responses on the right, and the damages on uh, at uh, the end of the beam and at the base of the column are shown here. Um, these uh, frames will be rehabilitated, uh, tested again, and also compared with um, different uh, frames designed with different uh, codes, newer codes, so we can have a comparison between old and new codes. Squat, a squat shear walls is being actually studied by Palermo in Ottawa. This is an example of a um, uh, one third uh, scale. Uh, squat walls that uh, is uh, ready to be tested. On the right, you see the model using vector two that shows the type of uh, failure, shear failure that you would expect from older uh, walls. Uh, and test is planned for next year. Slender shear walls is being tested at University of Ottawa by Palomo. Again, on the left, you see a slender shear wall. Um, reinforced with uh, standard reinforcing bars. On the right, we see the same uh, size wall, but with uh, ship memory alloys used, uh, still used for the bond. And one can compare uh, the result uh, obtained between the two walls in that particular case. 
Numerical modeling of slender reinforced concrete shear wall is being done at, in, at Ecole Polytechnique. Um, you can see here a very large uh, test that has been conducted on, uh, on um, shaking table and also model with different, uh, with different um, models, uh, refined finite element model um, vector 2 and also certified um, fiber models with open seas and from test comparison of test results and analytical prediction it is uh, uh, concluded that uh, one can uh, reproduce test results very reliably with these uh, analytical uh, models. After the uh, Chile earthquake it was actually um, evident that a large number of very um, slender walls suffered uh, damage and uh, the question was why you were assuming uh, that uh, those damages and damage and it was concluded that the, the, the slenderness of the walls was probably the most important char characteristic of those walls that influenced the response. So Adava at the University of British uh, Columbia conducted a large number of tests, about 40 tests on very slender walls. And what we, you know, what one can see from this uh, result, if you look at the left um, uh, figure, is that for very thin walls, the strain at which you have uh, a crushing of concrete can be very low, probably one third of what is expected. And certainly these uh, findings will find their way into the Canadian uh, standard. Um, test on elongated gravity load columns by Adobar, deformation mm -hmm. demand in high rise shear wall buildings by Adobar. Seismic safety of pre-1980 Vancouver shear walls is also demonstrated by the law at, uh, in uh, British Columbia. Seismic behavior of reinforced concrete shear walls with rosin foundation <coughs> for wavy and trombe. Performance-based design of reinforced concrete shear walls is being studied by the And uh, Mitchell is applying guideline, uh, ASC 41 guidelines to uh, older shear wall buildings. Um, that's something that is known that uh, there is significant shear amplification due to higher load um, effects in shear walls, although we don't have an answer right now how to address this problem in <coughs> Canadian standard as well as in the National Building Code. So studies have been conducted at the uh, University of Sherbrooke on um, shear walls and a very, very large number of um, uh, analysis, uh, refine one with vector two as well uh, as, well as with provinces, has allowed to develop some uh, uh, some equation that will give amplification to uh, uh, shear and moments to be used in the Canadian code and in, in the uh, CSA standard for concrete structures, and should be adopted in next uh, next uh, edition of the standard. Uh, um, similar study as uh, Edward is conducting was done on a building uh, damage, well, a building that apparently was not damaged in the later with the 12 story shield wall frame um, uh, structure. And there were significant damage concentrated on the <coughs> top, no damage in the walls for um, L shaped walls were at the corner of the building. And it was interesting to find what was the cause of the damage in the last six stories at the top of the building in the common. So evidently um, the um, demand, rotational demand placed on those bring on those um, beams by the rotation of the wall is the important characteristic there. And we don't account for that in the Canadian uh, code, nor in the uh, CSA standard, and something has to be done in that assuming that we should have something in the next edition of the code as well as in the next edition of the CSC system. Moving to 2.4, steel structures. Um, four researchers, Christopoulos from the University of Toronto, Kuwaiti, Ecological Technique, Lidron, Sherwood, and 
Colin Rogers from Lincoln University. Obviously, the most important one is missing there, probably from Ecole Polytechnic. Sorry, you were there. Um, a few research, research being conducted actually uh, will be highlighted only. Assessment of single story steel brace frame structures. Uh, this is done at McGill by Colin Rogers and his students. Assessment of multi story brace frame structures. Um, Echo Polytechnic and Concordia University. You see the number of researchers, students as well as professors. <coughs> An assessment of type 2 construction steel, no steel structures being done at the University of, to, uh, of Toronto. Here's an example of um, a bracing that was extracted from old structures and being tested uh, under reverse cyclic loading uh, at uh, Eco Polytechnic, but that's a work uh, combined between McGill and Eco Polytechnic. Um, full scale testing of a brace frame with double and double bracing members is a uh, member is being uh, done at Eco Polytechnic and you see this is one of those large scale testing on a very large um, laboratory medical quality. Uh, and uh, here you see the test being conducted at um, University of Toronto, I believe, on the game to column connection of type 2 C frame during, uh, actually during test. Um, moving to project 2.5, which is the OFCs. I don't want to read that long title. It's kind of very difficult to actually say. Jason McClure at McGill, uh, John Poe at University of Sherbrooke, and Carlos Venture at University of British Columbia are uh, uh, conducting research on that, uh, in that area. Post on quick functionality of emergency shelters in Montreal, assessment of 15 schools in Montreal uh, that are designated as post critical emergency shelters have been uh, done. Evaluation of 35 emergency shelters ordered on schools involving OFCs and screening of structural system are also being done by government here. In-situ evaluation of the dynamic characteristic of OFC in Vancouver continuous flexible complex system units. This is interesting because you, uh, Ventura is actually obtaining direct information from the operation of those OFCs. And post quick functionality assessment of architectural components are also being uh, uh, conducted by yeah. We move to 2.6, where there is a large number of, um, there are a lot of researchers actually working on bridge substructures. We'll illustrate a few of the projects. Uh, Guadani is uh, conducting evaluation of elastic and elastic seismic displacement demand in Canada, west and east, and also um, uh, using simplified uh, models to um, predict the response of more complex uh, bridge structures. Um, Nejeron actually is developing some uh, analytical uh, models that uh, he has with his student incorporated in open source and seems to be working uh, quite nicely. You see here a prediction compared to test results obtained by Lehman at uh, uh, Berkeley on tests of very large scale um, bridge piers, about 600 millimeter diameter columns. Actually, larger scale columns are being uh, planned at for next year, 930 millimeter uh, diameter columns will be uh, tested. Um, David Lau is actually conducting a probabilistic um, uh, development of uh, uh, fragility for bridges and what you can see here for the Ottawa region but also for uh, Canada. What you can see here are fragility curves that the other pain for uh, bridges uh, in Ottawa and uh, a breakdown of the fragilities in terms of cover, spalling, bar buckling and unsealing of the uh, main curves. Development of seismic design provision for the Canadian Highway Bridge Design Code involved a large number of researchers in the network, as you can see here, Mitchell Trombley, myself, Ventura, Trina, and Finn. And there is a few other ones, as you can see, uh, Atkinson, Finn, Elwood are participating, and Satchulu also participating, uh, understanding, committee on actual design for the development of the next generation seismic 
approach that will be also used in the uh, next uh, bridge code. Um, example, um, performance um, uh, uh, requirements are being developed for uh, a number of components, in particular for the isolators and dampers. Um, Mitchell is conducting, uh, has actually conducted uh, a study on uh, behavior of bridges with uh, irregularities and comparing the result uh, on the bottom graph, left is for regular and right is for irregular bridge. You see the demand increase quite, uh, quite a lot when you have irregular bridge, actually. Um, in British Columbia, um, a lot is being done in collaboration with the Ministry of Transportation by uh, um, Carlos Ventura and Jan Finn. And what you see here is the VC Sims where you have um, indicated on the maps. And I guess it's also accessible uh, quite freely. So you can go and look at uh, the bridges that are instrumented. A lot of bridges are actually instrumented, probably around 40. And also you can see um, the instruments of the GSC, so you can obtain uh, real-time uh, information on um, the bridge as well as recordings uh, after an earthquake. Uh, a number of bridges are also instrumented. This is an example of the second narrow bridge in Vancouver that is instrumented. Over 100 accelerometers, uh, around 20 strain gauges, and also um, the temperature gauge are uh, placed on that bridge and you can see the results in uh, real time if, I, uh, if I'm right. Um, a large number actually, uh, the, the, the stock of bridges in Quebec um, under the jurisdiction of the uh, Minister of Transportation of Quebec has been studied about 3,000 bridges. They were classified in terms of uh, tick slab, concrete, uh, uh, girder, single uh, span, steel, single span, multi-span concrete, and multi-span uh, steel bridges. And they have been uh, studied in terms of the generic model that was developed where um, geometries, material properties, soil um, properties were varied and um, studied to obtain fragility of those curves to uh, help um, in the, um, let's say, uh, rating of the bridge and also to help decision making after, say, an earthquake. And you can see here the fragilities of the different uh, uh, bridges uh, shown here in terms of um, levels of um, performance starting from um, uh, immediate um, use to um, complete uh, collapse of uh, bridges. Uh, all the objectives that were um, actually uh, assigned to the different projects are met. There is one last thing that is to transfer all the, uh, the wealth of data that we have obtained into uh, the guidelines that is the main uh, um, output of uh, the network and that will be done in the next year and obviously all the test results that we have obtained will certainly help in developing a canadianized uh, version of uh, the ESC for the one but that again we will leave it to uh, Mitchell to discuss uh, that. That is the end of my presentation.